What's up everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode. Today is going to be the ultimate cycling gift shopping guide with a bunch of items that I bought myself or yeah, I got gifted or I just recently tried out that have to do with cycling because I've seen that you really liked my cycling gadgets video which I posted recently so I thought let's have a look at the full list and the full spectrum of uh, yeah things that make a cyclist's heart beat faster. So the items are not coming in any particular order. So yeah, expect us to jump a lot around in the spectrum around topic, but also in the range of budgets. Um, things are going to be all over the place. But in the end, I think it's going to be a very exciting video. So let's go with uh, yeah the first gift recommendation. So let's start rather small on the budget side with the first item. A lot of cyclists really love to track their data when it comes to their rides, like the kilometers, their climbs, the power that they pushed into the pedals, and so on and so forth. And yeah, heart rate is a very interesting metric to track, especially when you're out doing efforts or when you're doing a little bit of training. Um, so especially when I'm climbing, I really like to keep an eye on my heart rate just to see in which zone am I, can I actually push a little bit further or not. Um, and yeah, I'm doing this with a very simple heart rate strap. So this is pretty much one of those units. I think the brain is up in here and then you have this strap that you wrap around, uh, around your chest. And uh, yeah, it very easily connects to your head unit that you have up front on your bike. This one is from a company called Magine. Um, yeah, looks nice, quite light and uh, yeah, connected flawlessly. But yeah, there are also a bunch of other companies out there making heart rate straps. They all pretty much do the same thing because it's a very basic item, but I think a great gift idea for anybody who loves to track their data. And uh, yeah, if you don't have one of these yet, it's a great addition to the setup. So for me, when I'm riding outside, safety obviously is top priority. So this is why my helmet is very important to me and also having a radar backlight is very important to me so I know what's happening around me. And just in general, being aware of uh, your environment. If a car is approaching, a sub if somebody is shouting at you, if a dog is barking and coming closer to you, things like this, um, I think they're very important to notice while you're out on a ride. Which is why um, I reached out to Halo in regards to their bone conductive headphones because I miss listening to music when I'm out on the bike because I don't want to put regular headphones into my ears because they're just going to lock out either one ear or worst case actually both ears from being able to hear what's happening around me. But um, yeah, they have some interesting tech which is um, yeah bone conductive headphones. So when you look at them, when they're mounted on your ears, they're actually not inside my ear, they're just in front of my ear and it's not working with speakers, it's basically just vibrations that are coming out of this little pucks and um, yeah, magically you can hear music or voice through these. So I would say when you're wearing them with your helmet, they kind of nicely blend into the strap setup visually. So when you're riding with other people, I don't think that they feel that they have to hold back approaching you, speaking to you because you're wearing headphones, because obviously your ears are open um, and you're not wearing headphones, but you still have some background music going or a podcast running. And um, yeah, this is, I think, where we come to the strength of this. Obviously your ears are open. You hear everything that's happening around you. I think other people are very comfortable with speaking with you while you're wearing them. Um, the downside is that audio quality, especially in the bass frequency response kind of area, is a little bit on the weak side. So don't expect these to be like full on high fidelity headphones, but they're definitely great if you want to listen to a podcast. So anything that's spoken, they're fantastic. And also when it comes to basically just having a little bit of background music going on. Um, in the background, especially during a group ride. They're IP55 rated, which might also be important for some of you. Um, so, which basically means that they're really resistant to sweat. So no issues with getting out on a proper training ride where you get really sweaty, even in winter or during summer, um, nothing's gonna happen to those earphones. So yeah also good for a sweaty day out on the bike. So these headphones are definitely my choice whenever I go out on a ride with somebody or on a group ride because I want to be approachable. I want other people to see that my ears are open so they don't hold back with any conversation. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, when I'm out with other people, I don't necessarily need the highest quality of audio anyways. I just want to enjoy like this little bit of background music and atmosphere that, um, yeah, that I can get from a very nice setup like this. So definitely great gift for anybody that's doing group rides and yeah, wants to enjoy a little bit of music while doing that. 
Then just staying with the audio and headphone topic for a second. There's another company called Ula Dance and they sent me their OWS Pro headphones, which are also not gonna be covering your full ear as well, but in a slightly different way that is not bone conductive. So how these work, these are open ear headphones. So they pretty much have a speaker that gets very, very close to your ear, but doesn't get into your ear and doesn't shut off your ear. So you still have both of your ears open. You can still hear everything that's happening around you, but yeah, you have a speaker that's fairly close to your ear. And the upside here is, um, in comparison to bone conductive headphones, is that audio quality is a bit better, especially when you're talking about music. So you got proper bass response and so on and so forth. They're also IPX4 rated, so you don't really need to worry about sweat and getting any sweat into them while you're out on the ride. That's all safe. They're also very, very comfortable. So I'm also using them at home just to take some calls during work. And I even had once a situation that I forgot that I'm wearing this and I was trying, trying to add my, to put my phone to my ear, noticing that I actually still wear the headphone. Um, so very, very comfortable. The upside is also that you can also just wear one at a time. Uh, you don't necessarily need to put both on because they're not connected with the strap. Also, you can see this as an up or down side, so you can wear one, but they're also not that secure because they're um, basically not connected like the bone conductive ones. But still, I think there is a big upside of being able to just wear one um, so your other ear is completely open, especially when you're riding with somebody. I think it's nice to have an open ear and show an open ear rather than closing off your ear where other people might be holding back of approaching you, talking to you, thinking that you won't hear them because you're wearing headphones because they are just not aware that this technology exists. So yeah, when I'm going out on my own, basically a solitude ride, I definitely take out these so I can enjoy high quality music. I don't need to look like I'm approachable. I think it's totally fine if my ear looks as if it would be covered with a headphone so people don't really need to approach me because I'm riding on my own anyways. But still, I know that I can completely hear everything that's happening around me. So I'm very well aware of my surrounding. So um, yeah, I also think this is a great gift for yeah anybody that wants to enjoy um, some music out on the bike and still stay safe. So as you already know, bike safety is the number one priority for me when I'm out on the bike. Um, from my previous favorite gadget video, you might also know that I'm a big fan of the Garmin radar, which helps me to, yeah, to see cars that are approaching me from uh, behind up on my head unit. And um, yeah, the downside of the Garmin one is, unfortunately, it is quite a pricey piece of kit. But there is a more budget-friendly solution and it's coming from the company called Machine that you already know from uh, the heart rate strap. They have a very similar product. It's also a light combined with a radar unit, which also does pretty much the same thing and shows you cars and objects that are approaching you from behind up on your bike computer. The upside here is it is more affordable. It does pretty much the same thing. And um, yeah, you could argue that maybe it actually looks a little bit sleeker with uh, the glossy finish compared to the Garmin one. So also with this one, of course, you have a bunch of different uh, light modes and animations and pulses and whatever, uh, yeah, whatever you want on this light. The upside here is in comparison to the Garmin one is that you can turn the light completely off and uh, still make use of the radar itself. So in case you see that you're running out of battery, you can basically switch into this mode and then yeah, save battery, but still keep track if cars are approaching you from the back. So yeah, if you wanna have a look at this one, this one's called Magine L508 is the model name. And yeah, I think a great gift for anybody that you wanna keep safe out on the bike. So I was speaking to Magine to send me their L508 to check this out and compare it to um, the Garmin one. I've also seen that they had another very interesting light in their portfolio and it's called the L308. And it is this very tiny, compact kind of pixel light. And the cool thing about it is that it can run a bunch of animations on it as well. But not only that, the thing that was interesting for me is that you can actually program your own animations onto it. So there is a little app that you can use on your phone and you can create little pixel animations yourself, program them in there and then send them to this little light and have them run on here. What I've done with this one is program this little smiley face um, that is giving you a little wink. I thought that that little smiley face with a wink might be a nice message that you want to send to the person that you've just taken over. So yeah, also great gift idea to keep um, yeah, yourself visible out on the roads with the little edge of being able to customize those animations.
The next gift idea is something for the cyclist who actually loves to ride outdoors, even in winter, even if it's raining, even if it's snowing, even if it's muddy. So the challenge with winter cycling is that it is by default maybe not the most enjoyable experience out there with the cold and the wet, but if on top of all of that you're getting all that cold road spray on your feet, on your back and everywhere, and um, yeah, I mean, that definitely doesn't add to a positive experience. And uh, for a while now, I was looking for some good mud guards, which I could apply to my road bike without making it look like some clunky off-road kind of setup. So I found these ones from a company called SKS and the model is called Raceblade. And um, yeah, they are quite narrow. They look quite nice. Um, I attach them to my standard Triebwerk and they don't really mess too much with the look. The cool thing about them is that you don't need to attach them by any screws or anything. You basically just tighten them up with those uh, rubber straps around the fork and um, around the stays in the back. And um, yeah, they sit quite solidly. They look good, they do their job. They're nice and deep, um, especially with that flap here towards the end, that you only get very minimal road spray on your back and on uh, your feet, which definitely helps you to keep you warm on longer outdoor rides. So I think a great gift for anybody who loves to cycle outdoors, whatever the weather is. So the next items on the list are winter clothing related. So I think if you maybe have looked at a couple of major brands, especially when it comes to winter clothing, your eyeballs might have popped out because uh, the prices are quite uh, horrendous. Yeah. So it is very expensive to actually buy proper winter clothing that keeps you warm, that keeps you dry as well. But there is a company out there called Sirocco, which is actually the company which helped me to get into cycling in the first place. So when I bought my first road bike, I was looking for proper clothing. And uh, yeah, I couldn't afford the major brands at that point, or I didn't want to invest that big money into a hobby that I didn't know I'm really gonna be into um, a year from now, two years from now. So maybe it's not really worth dropping 500 euros on, um, yeah, on a rain jacket or on a winter jacket. Questionable if it's worth it in the first place ever anyways, but um, Sirocco actually has quite some nice and affordable and very functional um, pieces in their portfolio. So as it has been a couple of years now since I last rode uh, the Sirocco gear, because right now I already switched over, um, I asked them to actually send over a couple of winter pieces so I can double check if the quality is still up on par on uh, yeah how I remember it. And actually it is maybe even better than uh, how it was two years ago. So I asked them to send me a winter jacket, which is called the J3. Um, it is a very nice winter jacket. It has minimal branding. So you have the Sirocco logo in the front and um, yeah, in the back you have some minimalistic dots. It doesn't really have a massive Sirocco font um, on top of it. Not that that would matter, but it is really nice. It has, uh, you basically you have all your pockets, all your standards in here. You also have a zip pocket on the side. Um, you have nice warm fleece on the inside and um, yeah, it really keeps you warm and dry when it is combined with the right base layer. So when it comes to base layers, they have their so-called SRX Denali. It is a winter base layer with a nice high turtleneck. The whole thing is made out of merino wool. So um, yeah, it uh, doesn't start smelling um, on a sweaty ride out there. And then it also has this interesting polyester front on your chest, which basically blocks the wind away and uh, yeah, keeps your chest warm, which is very, very important when you're going out there in uh, yeah, minus and freezing degrees. And then last item on the list, which you actually need to cycle outdoors uh, when it's cold, and it is bib tights. So these are called SRX Pro Supreme. Um, they're nice and long. You also have a nice fleece inner lining, so it definitely keeps you warm. The chamois is also nice and thick for a nice, comfortable long ride. And uh, yeah, as with the other parts, branding is pretty minimalistic. Um, you have this little Sirocco logo, black on black, pretty much here sitting on the side. And um, yeah, so in this outfit, you're having a quite nice and stealthy look that uh, yeah can keep you warm for a rather low price. And uh, yeah, additional discount code is down in the description below. There's also gonna be a video coming up where I'm gonna be comparing 
the Sirocco gear to um, yeah, some ASO stuff and some Panormal stuff, especially when it comes to uh, winter riding, because I think there are some really nice and interesting uh, observations in there. But that's gonna be another video. Let's move on to the next item. So the next item on the list is actually something that I made a dedicated video for um, quite a while ago. But as I was riding a lot of more kilometers um, using this, I thought it definitely belongs onto this list. And it is the Sweet Protection Falconer 2 VI Nips helmet. I bought this helmet a while ago when I was uh, cycling in Mallorca because I damaged my previous helmet. So before I was riding an HJC helmet and I actually rode a bunch of their helmets from pretty much all price categories from the very um, budget-friendly one up to the top of the line one and I always thought that they're quite comfortable so they're great helmets they look great so um, yeah, I was actually quite happy. But then I damaged one. I was in Mallorca, I was in Parma, and I was stopping by the Panormal shop anyways, and I noticed that they're selling these uh, Sweet Protection Collaboration helmets. They're not really cheap, but um, yeah, after I tried this on in the store, I really understood where this price tag might be coming from. And I have to say that now, after riding it for a couple of months, it is by far the most comfortable helmet that I've been wearing so far so you almost forget that you are wearing it nothing is pushing anywhere i don't have any pressure marks when i'm taking it off it's also um, one of the very few helmets which doesn't give me a mushroom head at least not as much as other helmets and on the inside you have the new mips system so pretty much the inner lining is uh, yeah freely moving uh, independent of the outer shell so in case of an impact um, yeah it takes away some forces especially some rotating forces from your head um, and yes, I think it I think it was just a great purchase. It's such a comfortable uh, helmet. You can definitely save some money if you don't go for the Panormal collaboration. You can also just go for the regular version of this helmet. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just different colorways, but I think they also look great. So um, yeah, have a look at the Sweet Protection Falconer 2 VI helmet with MIP system. So what else do we have? For the cyclist who likes to um, yeah, cuddle up with a nice book in front of a fireplace, there are also some nice cycling related books out there. So for example, for my German speaking viewers, there are a couple of books from uh, yeah, a brand called Ride Ride, which are beautifully made. And they're pretty much showing you the most exciting routes and adventures that you can do within Germany. So maybe even if you're not uh, German speaking, you still get the QR codes which directly get you to the routes. You have a lot of beautiful pictures which kind of show you what to expect. So I think if you want to give a gift to somebody who might be cycling in Germany, even if you're not German speaking, these might be very interesting for you as well. Other than that, there are also a couple of great books actually from GCN out there. Um, I got two of them. So the first one is The Plant-Based Cyclist, which gives you a lot of background on nutrition and then also a lot of good recipes which are yeah, giving you energy on a plant-based diet. The other one is called Endurance. So yeah, a lot of theory um, around how to cycle further and uh, how to train your endurance. And yeah, for cyclists who are maybe a little bit more into design and brands and their history and so on, I found one book from um, a brand called Brand Balance. Um, they have a bunch of books on a lot of different brands and I got this one on uh, the company called Rafa. So if you wanna get a gift for somebody and you notice that they're wearing a bunch of Rafa um, gear, then maybe this one's gonna be exciting for them as well. So the next one is a gift idea for uh, yeah something rather special in your life, I guess. And um, it is about wheels this time. So who doesn't love a fresh set of deep carbon section wheels? Deep carbon section wheels. Deep section carbon wheels. And they don't necessarily need to be as expensive as you might think they are. So there are a bunch of major brands out there where they produce magnificent wheels, but of course the price point is also reflecting that as well. But there's a company out there called Elite Wheels, who you might have already heard about um, me talking about in some of my other videos, because I'm a big fan of them. I've been riding a bunch of their wheels, actually their Elite Wheels I think ENT system that back in the day I actually purchased through AliExpress have been the first deep section carbon rims that I ever had. Um, I think that was three years ago. So um, I still ride a bunch of them. So these are, I think, 
50 or 60 millimeter, actually 60 millimeter deep Alita wheels. Um, so basically from their more budget friendly version. These are around 599. Then I'm also riding their more premium lineup, which is called Drive. So the difference here is mainly weight. Um, so while these Elite wheels ones, as you see, these are uh, rim brake wheels. They are slightly more on the heavier side, but they still ride and look beautiful. Um, you have these from uh, their Drive lineup, which are, I think, around $1,200 uh, dollars or euros. Um, this is actually the disc brake setup, but I have pretty much the same. Also the 50 millimeter deep section uh, rim on my sub seven kilo steel bike. And I'm actually gonna be adding a 65 millimeter deep section wheel to um, my standard Triebwerk now because Elite Wheels just recently started selling also mixed wheel depths. So you can have a rather shallow wheel in the front and a really nice and deep wheel in the back. So that's something that I want to try out with having a 50 millimeter up in front and a 65 millimeter in the back. But that's another topic. So I think if you want to buy either yourself or for somebody a nice set of carbon wheels, have a look at Elite Wheels. There is something pretty much for um, yeah, every price category from uh, $599 up to around $1200. Um, and they all ride fantastic, at least all the ones that I've ridden so far. And just to be clear, I paid for all those wheels myself. So um, even though there, I think there is gonna be a discount code uh, at the bottom because they reach out to me at some point noticing that, um, yeah, I'm making a lot of good advertisement for the wheels because I really, really love them. So um, we agreed to give my viewers a little bit of a discount. So um, I think it should be in the description below. So let's move on to something rather budget friendly kind of depending on how many you're actually getting of them. So when you're out on a longer ride, it is very important to get enough food in so you can keep your energy up. So far, I was using uh, energy gels from a company called SIS, Science and Sports, and I was actually very, very happy with them. Like, taste was good, consistency was good, easy to transport in your back pocket. But last year, I actually found a company called Oscar Oatbar, and um, yeah, since then, they have replaced my energy gels completely. So yeah, these are 100% organic, handmade oat bars with uh, a very interesting range of flavors. So for me, my favorite one is the lemon one because I mean, who doesn't like to have a little bit of a lemon cake aftertaste with their snack? But if you're out on a ride and you already had a bunch of those and you're looking for something that's not so sweet, there's also a very nice one with cardamom, which is more on the slightly spicy, salty side. So also very interesting flavor. But there are a bunch more flavors on the website. And the cool thing is that you can also order different packages of different sizes from them. Um, you can also create your own mix of, uh, yeah, I want like two lemon, two cardamom, three with caffeine and so on and so forth. They also have a couple of special flavors um, from time to time. So uh, yeah, definitely give them a look. And uh, yeah, I think it is a great gift for anybody at any point in time once you go out and ride because everybody of us needs to eat to keep the energy up. And I think this is a very healthy and very tasty alternative to uh, yeah, a lot of other options out on the market. All right, so while we're talking about high ticket items, let's also say you want to buy something either for yourself or for somebody who you know who loves cycling outdoors, who just loves cycling in general, but really, really hates when it's winter, when it's snowing, when it's raining and doesn't really want to get out then. And uh, yeah, you feel that person is in pain because uh, yeah, they can't ride during especially the winter season. This is where an indoor cycling trainer comes in. The cool thing about an indoor cycling setup is that it is kind of a modular system. So even if somebody already has an indoor cycling trainer, there are still a couple of items that you can add to it. I'm gonna to touch on those in a second. But if somebody doesn't have an indoor cycling trainer yet, then um, yeah, maybe that is something to be considered. What I'm currently running here, I'm using um, a Wahoo Kicker which is uh, a direct drive indoor trainer. I think it is important that when you look for an indoor trainer that it is a direct drive one. So basically one where you take the rear wheel out and you attach it to the trainer because there are also other trainers out there which rather work with uh, resistance against the rear wheel. They also work from the beginning but they are quite loud so it's a little bit difficult to like um, enjoy some Netflix or YouTube uh, while doing it and also your neighbors might not be the biggest fan of it either. But while I'm running a Wahoo Kicker here, there are also a lot of other options which are also way cheaper. It might also be worth having a look at um, AliExpress. There are also a bunch of good, very uh, well-priced bike trainers uh, out there. 
I actually bought one of my first ones back in the day, I think two years ago from AliExpress and was super happy with it. It's now sitting at uh, my parents' place whenever I need to indoor train there. Another cool thing about having like a smart indoor trainer like this is that you can also connect it to your iPad or your phone or your laptop or I think even your Apple TV and um, yeah, run some virtual cycling world applications. I think the most famous one is called Swift. So you can imagine this, that while you're riding on this trainer and pushing in the, into those pedals, that information of how much energy you're pushing into those pedals is transferred to your computer or laptop or whatever. And um, yeah, it's basically accelerating a virtual rider in a virtual world. So while you're sitting on the indoor trainer with it raining outside, you can look at a screen and see yourself cycling through like beautiful sunny streets along beaches and so on and so forth. You can even call up your friends, have group rides in there, do little competitions and so on and so forth. So it adds a little bit of an entertainment factor to um, indoor cycling as well uh, during the winter season. I would say the next module in the indoor cycling kind of setup, um, it's not necessarily required, but it's gonna make uh, the indoor ride way more enjoyable. And while you're cycling indoors, obviously inside it's gonna be way warmer than normally is outside, especially during winter riding. Um, there is no air that is blowing into your face, um, so you're going to be sweating a lot. So what's going to be very important is to get a fan that's um, yeah, going to cool you down a little bit while you're training indoors. I'm using a Wahoo headwind unit. The cool thing about this is that you can also pair it because I have the Wahoo kicker, so it kind of detects of how fast I'm virtually going and is adjusting the fan speed according to that. But you don't necessarily need to buy one of those fans. It's gonna be good enough to use any other fan you can find on Amazon or wherever. One recommendation though I would have is it would be great if it can be a fan that you can remotely control the power for. In my parents' place where I have my first um, indoor trainer, I use, I think, a Xiaomi regular home fan, which uh, you can control with an app. I think it was like 20 or 30 euros. So quite cheap in comparison to this one and pretty much does the same thing. I think it just has a little bit less power at the top end, but um, you might not need to push it up all the way anyways. And I would say the Xiaomi fan uh, or a regular indoor fan might also be a little bit more quiet than this one because if you want to watch Netflix or whatever while you're cycling, this one is a little bit, a little bit on the loud side. Let's move on to the next item. So if you want to buy an indoor cycling related gift for somebody who kind of already has, I would say pretty much the perfect indoor cycling setup, there might still be one item that they don't. And it is being able to cycle uphill indoors. So this little piece is uh, the Kicker Climb. I don't really know of any other alternatives from other brand, at least I haven't seen any others. Um, the cool thing, as you've noticed about it, is that you can cycle up hills. So if you want to train other muscles or you want to get out of the saddle, simulate that you're going up a Mallorca Sacalobra climb, you can actually just push a button and uh, yeah, create the gradient that you want. And if you're using it together with Swift, like this virtual world, also, of course, if you're cycling up a virtual hill, this will automatically adjust um, the gradient on this kicker climb here. So quite a cool gadget, nothing that you really need, like you absolutely don't need it, but if you have it, it's quite fun. All right, so talking about um, slightly more affordable items for the indoor training setup, one last one, and it is about a desk that you might need when you're indoor cycling because you want to place your laptop, your iPad, your bottles, some snacks, whatever, you want to place that somewhere. And I think around a year ago, I purchased this desk from a company called Tons. Um, so it's really nice. So the top of this desk uh, are a couple of elements which are 3D printed, so they lock in nicely together. And for the legs, you have these very nice natural wood poles, kind of. And yeah, those legs lock in nicely into this 3D printed structure. And yeah, overall, I think it is uh, quite a nice looking desk, which might be important for some, especially if your indoor training setup is in your living room like mine. So it is not super, super cheap, but in comparison to, for example, the Wahoo desk, which I would say doesn't look that inspiring, um, it is cheaper than that and it looks better. So this is why it's on this list. I would be very happy to get a gift like this. So now let's talk about something that can marry your mobile phone with your bike. And it is um, 
actually a phone case by a company called Moose. And um, I mean, it has the regular MagSafe accessories, so I have my so I have my credit cards and a little bit of cash and my ID on here. But underneath that accessory, you see this little texture right here. So then where the magic happens is a little accessory also from them, which uh, yeah has this mount on one side so you can very easily magnetically attach it to it. And as you might have noticed on the other side, there is a little Garmin mount. So now, either if you're on your indoor trainer and you want to watch some Netflix or YouTube while you're on the bike, you basically just place your phone um, in the position where normally your bike computer would be, or you're traveling somewhere, you forgot your bike computer, or it's a very casual ride that you're out on and you don't need your bike computer, you rather want to have your phone on there. So um, yeah, it very easily allows you to mount your phone to your regular Garmin upfront mount that you might have on your bike already anyways. So that's it for now. I hope you might have found something interesting in this uh, little shopping guide of mine. And if you have other ideas of items that you can gift to your fellow cyclists, drop them down in the comments. I'll be very interested to also get them on my shopping list. If you like this episode, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're not subscribed yet. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.